Hey everyone, this is Case and Knight over at iSolids 3D Printing. We're an additive manufacturing service provider in Texas and we recently put out a video just touring our 3D print farm and we got a much bigger response than we ever imagined with a lot of great comments and questions. We want to answer those questions and the best time for us to do it is after hours when things are less chaotic and there's just less background noise in the shop. So without further ado, here's a new series that we're going to call 3D Print Farm After Hours and I'll start with the most popular question that we've gotten and that is, why don't we maybe upgrade our fleet to something faster and more modern like the Bamboo Lab X1? Well, it's a really tough question to start with, mainly because there's a lot of sub conversations that we get had around this, like the ROI and business case side of things. But I'm just gonna focus on production capacity. How many X1s would we even need just to match what we've already got invested in? Well, I'll define first what a 3D print farm is because I think that's important. And we'll look at Form Labs or MarkForge as a reference here. Ultimately, it's a array of 3D printers that is designed for production output. And that's exactly what we've got. It doesn't specify necessarily what type of printer it is or how many printers define a 3D print farm. In our case, we have an FDM technology behind us that is mostly consumer grade, but we have 130 of them. This is what most people would imagine or envision when I say 3D print farm. But we also have powder-based technologies like selective laser sintering and multi-jet fusion. We have about eight of multi-jet fusion behind me. And yeah, there's only eight machines, but these are big industrial machines with much higher throughputs. So can we fairly add that capacity to our overall production output? I'm just gonna say the answer is yes, but I'm curious your opinions. Of course, you can add those to the comments and all of that good stuff below. All right, well, let's dig in and find out what is a good benchmark? And well, best way to do that, in my opinion, is to go to Bamboo Studio. This is the, the source, and this is directly from Bamboo Labs. We'll look at ABS material, and we'll look at the maximum flow rate. Now, the reason I say maximum flow rate is because you can move as fast as you want, the X direction, Y direction, and Z direction. You can have really great acceleration characteristics, but if you can't extrude the material reliably, that's ultimately going to be your production bottleneck. And the reason I say ABS is the vast majority of what we produce is either a polyamide, ABS, ASA, or a urethane flexible material. PLA and PETG makes up less than 5% of our overall production output, even though in the consumer space, those are the most popular materials where people are looking at doing speed benchmarks. So 16 millimeters cubed per hour is what's defined by Bamboo Lab here. And if we extrapolate that out, it equates to around 57 centimeters cubed per hour. All right, well, if we look at our FDM technology behind me, then we just look at empirical data. It's simple because we log every single print that we have. It gives us our total material usage and our total print time. I will make one side note that none of the machines that we have are stock. We're running clipper-based firmware with its own proprietary software level layer and we also have a lot of mechanical hardware upgrades but i'll get into that maybe in a future video just know that our empirical numbers show that we print at 34 centimeters cubed per hour if you compare that to 57 it's really not quite as big of a delta as most people would might imagine now keep in mind these are actual real life numbers compared to theoretical numbers i would equate that to be around a 30 maybe 35 percent production increase so if we take our 130 printers, upgrade all of them, we would need around 100 Bamboo Lab X1s just to match the FDM fleet. All right, well now let's look at the MJF technology. This is where things might be skewed a little bit heavily. Well, the reality is the way the technology works, it's a powder base on top of fusing agents that get applied through tens of thousands of jets. This is where we get our speed. We're not using one nozzle that's maybe 0.4 to 0.8 millimeters on average, but rather tens of thousands of jets. And we're doing it all at the exact same time. Well, if we look at HP's brochure and just get the actual advertised production output, and it's in the exact format that we want, it's 5,000 centimeters cubed per hour. That's for an HP 5200 series fit printer, which is what most of our fleet is made out of. Well, if we extrapolate that and compare it to the 57 centimeters cube, that means we would need 88 X1s just to match the output of one HP MJF 5200 series printer. Obviously, that sounds extreme, but it is real life when we compare it to our overall production output. That means with the eight MJF printers we have currently with plans for expansion, 
then we would have around 600 equivalent X1s that we would need. We add that on to the 100 FDM that we would need. It equates to 700 plus Bamboo Lab X1s just to match our existing capacity. Now there's one other thing here that I think is actually giving a benefit to the argument of an X1 fleet. And that is the fact that MJF actually prints at a higher resolution with a higher strength. It's near isotropic, just inherent to the way the technology works. There's no support material, so we can actually remove all of that from the calculation, and it has a more efficient workflow. So if you add factor those things in, in my opinion, we're looking at around a thousand FDM X1s that we would need to match our output. That's not including the number of employees that we would also have to increase because of the sheer maintenance and applications that make things more complicated with that amount of machines. Well, those numbers do sound extreme, but I will say that it do, does match our existing real life business that we see. Around 80% of our overall output comes out of an industrial, mostly powder-based technology, with around 15% coming out of the machines that you see behind me, and around three to 5% coming out of photopolymers. So that's a lot to unpack. I think this matches our real life numbers, and I'm curious to see what you think in the comments. Like always, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll answer some more questions in the future. Thanks, everyone.